Hello and welcome to another episode of the 1106 of the Second Photography Podcast. Today I'm joined by Gary and we're going to be talking about our street images. So I noticed Gary's YouTube channel on well, YouTube and it, it came up for me in my suggested videos to watch because I quite often watch videos about street photography and one of Gary's videos came up and I watched it and I subscribed to his channel and here we are today. So we're just gonna be talking about our street images. But before we get into that, Gary, can I ask that you introduce yourself? Just just give us a bit, bit of background about you, please. Sure, uh, my name's Gary Norman, uh, and I have a YouTube channel which is called Re Photography. It was primarily set up really as a landscape photography channel, but as it's gone on, I've um, branched out really into some of the other areas, and I'm particularly enjoying my street photography at the moment. Um, I've been taking photos, God, for as long as I can remember, really, but seriously making an effort to sort of go out and really take photos probably for about the last five or six years and about the last year and a half spent on YouTube. Thank you, Gary. That's really interesting that, like, like me, you've been taking photos for a long time, but now you're making the effort to sort of go out and, if I said do it seriously, I think that would be the wrong term, but make a sustained effort to go out and get those photos yeah it's um it's something that i've always been interested in like i said i really found my uh, interest from watching other people on youtube uh, before i was a keen photographer but i wouldn't say that i was like you say a, a serious photographer i was more of a, a keen amateur and, it, and i just needed that little push to get me going out and watching a few others on youtube has really done that so yeah it's been really i've, I've really enjoyed it i have to say Good. And roughly how, how often do you go out and get some photography done, Gary? I try, well, my channel, I try and put out weekly content, so at least once a week. And that, I mean, I don't really go anywhere now without vlogging it. <laughs> so um, probably I try and get out at least once a week. Sometimes I can manage to get maybe a couple of vlogs in the same day. So that gives me a little bit of leeway, but yeah, at least once a week. This is completely off topic and you don't have to answer, of course, but from one content creator to another, I, I do weekly episodes of this podcast and I, I do find it um, sometimes quite difficult. And I find an awful lot of my time goes on my, my sort of weekly commitment. How do you do you find that in terms of time? Um, I have to say it's a pretty poignant question, really, because right at this very moment, I'm really struggling to actually have a little bit of motivation to get out. It is difficult because when you're doing weekly content, you're putting a you're putting yourself under pressure really to uh, get something out. You're giving yourself a deadline, so it can take away the enjoyment a little bit at times. But uh, yeah, it is a struggle. And also, like you say, there's it's not just the going out and taking photographs. It's setting it up. It's pre, you know pre-planning everything, and then it's also the post-processing at the end of it. So there is quite a lot. And um, yeah. I, this time of year I do struggle a little bit but um, it's not too bad. I think as well for, for myself and Gary this isn't the first time um, we've tried to set this up. I have been a letdown in the past and, <laughs> and I've had to cancel on Gary um, just because life got in the way and my, my life's fairly hectic at the moment anyway. Life does have a habit of getting in the way and throwing up some things that get in the way of pursuing your hobby and and getting content out unfortunately most definitely my wife um, has ms so i'm her primary carer so obviously i have to uh, juggle my, the more important part of caring for her with my hobby but um yeah it does get in the way and i think the thing is as well you'll probably get this that when you even though you, you're not getting paid for, for doing any of this and, and it's, it's a complete it's, a, it's just a hobby there is an expectation on you once you start putting out weekly vlogs it's people will be but where's your blog this week what's going on and it can be quite tricky i've not had that but then i haven't i did sporadic this was quite sporadic and then i said no i'm going to do it weekly and and i do apologize if you tuned in or you're listening for a street photography we haven't quite got there yet i decided right i'm going to do it weekly and i think for the last for quite a long time i've been doing weekly but i've never had anyone say where's your episode because one i, I haven't missed an episode and i've been quite regular and I've got a routine in place now for delivering content but have, have you had that people saying oh where's your episode this week or is that a pressure you put on yourself I do it is a pressure I put on myself but I've also had I have had some comments when I haven't put something out saying well you know we've, we've been waiting for this it's a it's a Monday and you haven't put anything out so uh, but I try now the last few weeks I've tried not to be quite so 
structured on when it comes out so there's not that expectation that it's going to come out on a Monday at a certain time so like last week I put one out on Friday and I think the week before on a Thursday so you do get that I have to admit that probably the most pressure is from yourself it's from within you do put a lot of pressure on yourself to get the content out I find it astounding that people comment on, on things like that I don't know why in, in today's society it surprise me anymore Right, I will start. This is my first image and I love going into London to shoot and I'm quite fortunate that I live fairly close to London. So I can nip into London, I can read my book on the train. It, it's it's a nice thing going in something like a nice cup of coffee, grab some, grab some food, do some photography. And when you're in London, you can get a good image anywhere. You, everything can be shot. This image, I took a whole bunch of cameras in with me and other equipment and I just ended up using the one camera and it was a compact camera, so, um, the Olympus TG5 and I've got to say I, I really like the camera no one was threatened by me, I don't go around with a DSLR and it has a bit of image stabilisation, not the best it's 12 megapixels so I'm happy with that and, and it just works via aperture priority this is one of the first images I got on that trip but this is one of my favourite images hold the handrail so for those people at home i'm going up an escalator and you get this warning on sort of the vertical part of the stairs in the escalator that face you and this just says hold the handrail and it was i i really dislike in london when i'm in a rush and i'm trying to go up the escalator on i think the left hand side i'm trying to walk up and there were people stood in the middle of the escalator well I did that because there was no one else on the escalator I stood right in the middle and I crouched down so I got a low shot so as you it looks like stairway to heaven really you've got this bright light at the top and we've got nice leading lines that go towards the bright light in the escalator and we've got this horrible yellow dirty writing that holds the handrail and interestingly I edited this on my iPad on the way home on the train so it's a little bit noisy I did try it in black and white and, and I stuck with the colour in the end, I much preferred it. What are your thoughts, Gary? Well, firstly, I actually really like the image. Um, I like the yellow. Uh, I think that, for me, when you're doing street photography, coming from a landscape photography background, it, it's so much, you've got so much more freedom when you're doing street because you, you don't have to get everything in focus. You can play with your composition, you can play with, like I say, depth of field. And, and I, I really like in this image, I really like the, the grungy nature of it. I like the fact that the, that the writing is, it, it looks dirty. It looks like it's had sort of, it's been kicked around quite a bit. Um, and I like the leading lines that are taking you up to the nice bright lights at the top. It's sort of, it's sort of taking you somewhere. It's saying that you know, you're, you're, you're heading off into somewhere better than where you currently are. So yeah, I mean, I like the image a lot. And the, the hold the hand rail is really quite strong in the foreground, which kind of, makes it very a very strong image and also i like the fact that you've got the the diagonals of the yellow guide rails are coming out to the edges of the picture so it shows that you've got a nice sort of centralized image no I, I agree particularly i can't remember what tube station that was but particularly you do get this nice sense of freedom when you reach the top of the escalator you put your card in the machine and you're out past its bounds so that's nice let's look at the next image Again, this is this is one I like. Same camera. Outside, it was a miserable rainy day, and it was like this all day. And and I went various places in London. I had sort of a schedule I kept to. And this woman. Sometimes you get a gift in street photography. Not that I am by any means the street photography expert. And this was that gift. We've got a what looks like a red. I don't know whether it's a phone box. I don't think it is a phone box. It's just a big red box that's metal. Oh, it's a cash machine. That's what it is. It actually tells me what it is. It's a cash machine. It's been vandalized in graffiti. You have a woman on a phone next to it who has a pink coat and a red bag that matches. And for me, that was a gift because we've got two colors that are the same. And the, I think a phone's red as well. And her coat is a very similar color. And she wasn't paying the, the blindest bit of attention. She's actually got her eyes closed in the image. Um, and she had her eyes closed for ages. Um, not that I was standing there looking at her, but in all the time I was lining up and getting the shot, she had her eyes closed. So that for me is a 
a typical street photography and it, it was a gift what do you think absolutely i mean for me that's one of the best things about, about going around london people don't really care you, there, you, I, I do carry a DSLR when I go on looking to get a smaller, a smaller form camera. Even with that, people don't really care because they're just off in their own world. So, but I, I like this image again. Like you say, the red of the handbag and the red of the cash point, and also on the other side with a bit of balance, there's a little red sign. So you kind of got that sort of splash of red throughout the image. And I know that a lot of people, especially if you if you go to a, a camera club and you get judged, they like red for some reason. It's, it's, it's quite striking, I imagine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a real classic, typical street image, especially around London, you, you'll see a lot of this. The one thing as well that I'd say is, I don't know if you found this, but when I go to London trying to take a photo, the amount of times people are on their phones, it's it's all it's almost everybody in the shop is doing something on their phone when you're trying to take an image unless they're physically buying something from the store or actually doing something when they're just when they're just sitting and you know that sort of free time they're all on their phones it's so hard to get an image of someone that isn't on their phone to get an image of someone who's not on their phone is, is not only possible but <laughs> I, I know some people really object to having people on their phone in their images i don't i quite like people on their phones i think i could do a little project on people on their phones because everyone is on their phone it's a it's a it's a, a statement of modern times, isn't it? Really, it's you know I don't I don't see there being any problem with it. It just it just shows because basically for me, street photography is trying to catch life on the street, and that is life nowadays. People on their phones, that's what they do. I totally agree. Let's look at the next one. This one I really liked. We've got this poor old couple who look out of place. So for the, for those people at home, this is on the underground again. I can't remember what stop. We've got a tube coming in that's moving so that's in blur in the foregrounds we've got a, an elderly couple i would say who look completely out of place in london but are doing their best to cope with it they don't look amused not with me because they haven't spotted me i took quite a lot of these people they didn't notice at all but they, they're just not amused and it shows on the lady's face i think that the man is a bit more hard to judge and they're just waiting to get on the train and that's that really it kind of looks like they've had an argument <laughs> with each other. It looks like, you know, come on, let's just get on this train and get a move on. To be honest with you, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult shot to take because when you're in a tube, I don't, I'm pretty sure you haven't used a tripod, but they're very, very hot on using tripods. So whenever I go, if I do anything in the tube, I, I just try and do it handheld. And to get the sharpness with the train as well, it, you know, with the blurring of the train, it's, it's quite a tricky feat. So, yeah, it's a good shot. I never take a tripod when doing sort of street photography. I just put it in ISO, actually no, I put it in auto ISO and I put it on the lowest aperture value and it's of course an aperture priority and most cameras I shoot like that. Auto ISO if it's got it, otherwise something mid 400 or 800 if it doesn't have auto ISO and then just aperture priority, hope for the best. I mean this might have been around 1 60th of a second which for some people I mean, I need that to capture the motion of the train. If I had a really fast shot speed, it'd be rubbish because it's just like a train, a tube, not going anywhere. But these people were great because they didn't really move about, so I got a sharp image on them. Yeah, 100%. You uh, you definitely needed to catch the motion of the train there, and, and uh, yeah, you've done that well. It's um, I, I definitely agree. I mean, when I'm shooting street, I will, I will flip between aperture priority and shutter priority, depending on what I'm trying to capture. So normally, most of the time, I'm in aperture priority because I don't mind a little bit of movement because that's sort of telling the story. Um, but there are occasions when I want to freeze that movement, so then I'll move over to shutter priority and they usually go about, oh, I'm trying to think, well, you shoot out somewhere about one five hundredth of a second, but then it, you kind of have to be outside, otherwise your ISO is going to be bumped up quite high. But high ISO isn't the end of the world in street photography. It does give it that gritty urban look, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I say, it's so different because when, you, when you're taking landscape photos, you're, you're aiming for ISO 100, you're aiming for sharpness front to back. But in, in uh, street photography, it, it, anything goes really. You, you, it's, 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 a, it's just art, isn't it? So it's trying to get what you can out of that image. And if it's a bumped up at high ISO, you can say, okay, great, then I'll make it even more grainy. I'll grunge it up even more just to give that real urban feel. Next image. This one, again, is tube-based. Let's switch things up. 
Gary, if you're happy to, I'd like you to describe the image. Okay, sure. This image is obviously coming down the escalator and there's quite a bit of movement. It, it, it looks very much like the people are standing still on the right and you're taking it on, a, on the move as you're walking down the escalator on the left. There's a, uh, I think it's a lady in the foreground. Uh, there's a, a, another person right at the bottom of the escalator and they are blurred. Uh, it looks like intentional camera movement slightly down from the sort of from the top right down towards the bottom left it's very high key so if we look to this on a histogram a lot would be to the right because it's a very bright image and actually you, you've described things spot on there i put it at quite a high aperture and i moved it so we're on a move i'm behind these people on the moving escalator and i moved it from camera right to camera left to get sweeping motion as well and you could, you could look at that and say, God, you've taken a bad picture. Or you could look at that and say, you've taken a really good picture there. I really like it. Technically, I could have got this picture by accident, if you understand what I mean there. No, I really like it. It's, it's a really good one. I really like it too. I like the high key. I like that the highlights are quite blown in places. I like the intentional camera movement. Let's put it this way. If you'd stood there and taken that image with a high shutter speed, it wouldn't be anything because it's just two people on, there, on an escalator. If you, if you get my point, but the fact that you've done this, you've introduced this movement into the image, it, it's saying busy, it's saying rushing, it's saying London, really. And you're right, it would be boring, those two people on the escalator, because there's no story. If we go back to some images, the people collecting the train, you said they look like they've had an argument. The woman on the phone, there's a story there. You think, why, why has she been across the road, the woman on the phone, what, what's she doing? Here, there would be no story. The man at the bottom, I think it's a man. The man at the bottom getting off the escalator is actually getting off into a white blur. It's like he has gone up the staircases of heaven and he's in the white glow. We don't know what he's going to. And I think that, while not the most dramatic of story, does give an element of unknown does slightly give this a bit of story that wasn't there before. Essentially, you've made the story with the camera movement. That's the way I look at it. And I think that with photos, it's really important that when, especially when you're taking street shots, is you ask yourself beforehand, what, what am I trying to say here? What, what am I trying to say with this photograph? Because otherwise, it, if you are feeling the image and you've got a story to tell, it definitely shows in the photograph. If you've just taken a picture of a random person, often there's no, there's nothing there. Okay. Right, so next image. It's people with umbrellas on that horrible rainy day. They're all at different angles, people in the group, but predominantly people are queuing for something. I don't know what they're queuing for. I raced past once I'd taken the image, I, I ran away. Not that anyone would notice from the way they're positioned. I find this one interesting because you've got all of these people with umbrellas. The story here is well, what are they doing? Because there's no there's no facial expressions because there's no faces in the image at all. I probably would have liked to have seen just one face. If you could have just got one face looking at you just for a little bit of difference with the other ones, that would have made it a really you know excellent image. But it's still a good image of it is. And the story here is what well, you know, what are they doing? Everything about the image tells the story of the day. You can tell you can because they've got umbrellas up but you can really tell that it's a great miserable day they all look pretty miserable even though you can't see their faces their their body language is saying oh god you know just get me out of here i agree it would have been really nice to have any stuff like that. the vast majority of umbrellas are all different it would have been really good if they were either all the same or all completely different we've got those classic black umbrellas there well i don't know that they're black they could be red or dark blue but in the image in the black and white image they look black most of them but in the sort of closer foreground a group of women who have completely different umbrellas maybe they're a bit more individual than the other curious who knows mm. often often as well if you can get an image that's that's quite uniform so if you had all of those umbrellas exactly the same other than just the one that really makes that you know makes the image something that makes it stand out because you've got that one different thing amongst a lot of uniformity right let's have a look at the next image again we have someone on their phone. Uh, so we have two girls shopping in maybe Oxford Street. They've got their umbrellas up and that's that. It's not the best image in all honesty. It's a, it's a real social commentary though, isn't it? Because they're obviously together and instead of chatting to a mate, she's on the phone, which is interesting. I think though, it, it's reasonable. I mean, rainy days always make for good images as well, because if you look down on the floor, you've got all these reflections and I think they add something to the image. They make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, let's move on to the next image. 
gonna skip that gonna skip that this one I like so this isn't from the same day this is from uh, a different day in the summer when it's incredibly hot and this was shot on a Fuji X70 I think and this was just at the South Bank Center this is just me looking up at pattern in the construction of the huge the concrete South Bank Center so you've got these sort of square square hollow bits in the roof basically and some have lights lights poking through and some don't and I've just sort of got a cross section of that and this is what I'm talking about with the uniformity and the the one odd thing that's within the image so you've got all these uniform squares and then you've got I assume that's a light in the top right hand third and that just draws your eye across because you're you're so concentrated initially on looking at the squares and you think oh what's that and that adds a bit of interest to the image so yeah i mean i, I like that one quite a lot and let's have a look at the next image i've mainly taken a picture of the staircase in front of the south bank center because the staircases are cir or semi-circles and i thought that sort of was quite a good juxtaposition against the squareness of the South Bank Centre. Yeah, I mean, you've got some interesting geometric shapes. I mean, photography is quite a lot about shapes, isn't it? Even when you've got people in it, it's also about the, the different geometric shapes you can get into the image. I like this one. Probably, I, I, did you say the process is on your uh, iPad? I might have just crunched the blacks a little bit just to really bring out, because it looks like there's some really nice texture in the, in the square building and also the sort of panelling on the circular staircase. I might just really push the blacks to see if I could get that out a bit more. This um, interesting, uh, it was a Lightroom edit. So the, the the first set of images you had to look at were, were done on the iPad with the Olympus TG5. These images you're gonna see now were done in Lightroom with Fuji X70. There is, I think I've recovered quite a lot of detail for this because it was such a bright sunny day. I think I put it in the camera in F8 just put it on a low ISO because it was so bright and again did aperture priority and I was getting ridiculously quick shutter speeds. It was one of those days where you don't actually want to go outside. Do you, do you remember those? It seems odd now we're in October and it's cold but do you remember those days from the summer we just said I don't want to go outside it's too hot. I remember them well. <laughs> I actually wish they were back. <laughs> I much prefer those warmer days. I prefer the cold because you can always put another jumper on or you can always put another pair of socks on. When it's excessively hot, you get to a point where you can't take anything else off. And that's probably a good point to move on to the next image. This is a woman jogging and she's jogging along, I'm not sure what the bridge is called, but it's quite a famous bridge over the Thames that is next to the South Bank Centre. You might know what it's called. Ooh, that's a good question. No, I'm not sure myself either, if I'm honest. So I rocked up here, made out I was taking a picture of the Thames. There's a look in her eye that says, are you taking a picture of me or am I running in your frame? I quite like the street photography to pretend to be a tourist and find that the majority of people don't respect me as a tourist and just walk in front of my image. But actually, that's what I'm trying to do. So their rudeness is, is, is fantastic because I intend to take a picture of them and I have, but they just don't know it. I completely agree with you there. O oftentimes it's, it's very frustrating when you're trying to take a picture because you look and you think, right, I've got this set up here. I like this composition. I just need someone to walk into it. And they, and they look at you and go, oh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> you're taking a picture. I'm like, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm not taking a picture. And as they go, you snap them quickly. But yeah, you can see in this image that she's she spotted you. That's the real interest of the image is the fact that she's looking at you and is she she looks tired for a start, just worn out from her running. But also she's looking at you almost like you are you taking a picture of me, you know, what are you doing? It's kinda of, I like that. I think sometimes street photography is quite good when you get that confrontational look on someone's face. It's it sort of it brings out a little bit of what's the word I'm looking for, not aggression, but uh, conflict within an image. Also got nice leading lines of the rail as well in the background. Yeah, and I like the way that they're ever slightly dropping out of focus as they go back as well. So that makes for a, yeah, it does make for an interesting shot. Uh, again, I mean, look, I, I like the shot, but just from a point of view, I probably it's a shame that her shadows falling out of the image. If that had been fully in the image, it probably would have been really nice. No, I completely agree. That that's very well picked up on, actually. Don't feel shy of critiquing. I, I think that is something I would have never thought of. So I'm going to say thank you for that, because I, I wouldn't have ever thought of it. And the shadows that day, I mean, you can see in the trees at the back, they are really long, harsh shadows that day. And she looks knackered. I was knackered walking with, with, with a camera and a bag. And she's running on such a hot day at lunchtime as well. 
so she must be tied. The next image I much prefer, which is the same place really, and similar thing. So this is black and white, and it's been edited high contrast. And to be honest, because of the conditions, it's gonna be a high contrast image anyway. We've got a woman who's striding very confidently. There's a bag on the floor, just outside of a shadow, and her shadow is prevalent in the image. And it's actually down from where I took the other image. So I think this was the first image I took it and then I walked along and waited for the jogger to run past and you can see by the position of the buildings between the two images that this was slightly closer to the probably the left hand shoreline. Yeah this is a much stronger image for me. The, the fact you've got the shadow in, the fact that there's a little bit of separation of bags quite interesting even though you sort of you know a lot of people might be tempted to say I'll clone that out because it doesn't look right. I think the bag actually adds to the image it gives a little bit and also in the other image it was slightly askew so the buildings were ever so slightly um, they weren't level whereas these ones are, are level so it's, it's i don't know why that shouldn't really make a difference but it kind of just it makes it feel a little bit more normalized when you when you're looking at it and everything's in a straight line and those straight lines complement i think the straight lines of the buildings complement the, the fence of the bridge or the, the you know the, the I can't think of what I'm trying to say, but the, the, the bridge going off in the distance, the, the verticals and the horizontals complement each other quite nicely there. She looks like quite a good subject as well because there's a there's sort of like character in the way she's walking. Typical London look, I would say. Absolutely. Absolutely typical London look. Couldn't care less either because she's not interested in what you're photographing, but the fact you're photographing her at all. Yeah, so it says, walk in my way and I'll push her out of the way. That, that's the sort of look she has without even acknowledging me. Absolutely. And that's the best, really. I mean, like I said, sometimes it's really good to get that conflict when someone's looking, but also it's it's nice to get where people just couldn't care less and they just want to bring the shot anyway. Let's look at the next one. Similar thing. I'm, I'm not going to spend too long on this. We've got a chap having a coffee on this hot day. He's mad, but he hasn't noticed me. Uh, I like the high key of it. Um, again, his shadow's out and he's probably looking ever slightly out of the frame. It would have been better if you say a third back into the frame onto the right hand side. But other than that, yeah, it's a nice shot. This one I think is quite good. So it's black and white again, what a surprise. We've got two chaps underneath the bridge and they're in shade but they're just about to step into the light and they're both in shorts and some gear and one is pulling a, a put along suitcase that you have at the airport the one is pulling a suitcase doesn't look like it's in a rush but whoever he's with is in a rush you can tell and, and that's just that bridge i was previously on that's that's underneath that bridge so i have no idea where they're going what they're up to what they're doing they were very loud people they just happen to be in front of me and I managed to get the shot off. I like this one simply because you've got some really nice shadow and highlight areas and it's quite contrasty. You can see from those two, the way that they're walking, that they are quite um, loud. They're going to be quite loud. They look, they look very confident in the way they're walking. And it's also good that you've got the third person further down. I think that the, it's, it, it's, the people are forming a nice leading line into the distance along with the buildings on the left hand side that are also leading away into the distance. So yeah, I like this shot a lot. Thank you. No, I agree with that. I hadn't really thought about that person there. This is black and white. An old man has walked around the around a corner and I've walked around at the same time and I've managed to get my get a shot off. He's quite old. He's of a generation who would wear a suit on a Sunday with a tie. I think that's fair to say. I don't know what he's doing there. He doesn't know what I'm doing there. And I think he's about to mop his brow sweaty brow with a tissue it very much looks like that doesn't it i, love, I, I think uh, like elderly people are fantastic subjects in, in photographs because they're so that like like you say that the the dress that he's wearing the, the suit and the tie and the trousers it's completely out of character with the with the weather that's clearly warm you can see from the shadows and i like the fact that you've used this uh this wall on the on the right hand side to anchor the image it is it's nice um i can't see i can't see on my screen whether his face is sharp or not it looks like it might just be his hair that looks like it's a bit fuzzy but that that could be that could be what's causing it his hair's moving actually it's what hair he has and, and i certainly won't make fun of his hair because he's probably i'll probably be like that in a couple of years but i think yeah he doesn't have a full set of hair but what he does have is a of around yeah, and, he, and he's, he's, um, his face is sort of shouting exhaustion and hot and 
you know, it either looks like he's about to sneeze, but I actually think he's just he's just worn out, and like you say, he's going to mop his brow with that tissue. So yeah, that that for me is telling the story. It's telling a real story. So yeah, it's a good image. Next image. This is in the same location, actually, just looking up. I'm not going to talk too much about this. I've got some nice buildings because while everyone thinks street photography is about people, I think the environment and, and buildings are equally as important. And I'd be quite happy to put that up on my wall. And it's it's just a picture of a building from the street, really. Absolutely. I mean, in one of my vlogs, I, when I go to London, I, I'm questioning myself as to whether I'm actually really a street photographer or, or, whether, or whether I'm actually carrying out street photography on that day or whether I'm taking pictures of the environment and then using the human element to, to sort of anchor the image. Um, street, definitely, I agree with you 100%. Street photography doesn't have to be about people all the time. For me, it's about composition. It's about capturing the, the essence of, of where you are. And this image captures the essence of where you are perfectly, even though there's nobody in it. People are always in motion and people are in motion here. I don't, we've got, I think we're just coming up, I'm coming up to, I'm on one of those side streets that's going to come up to the Ops routes. Uh, I can't remember what tube stop I'm in, but it's coming up to a busy street on London and you've got quite a lot of people heading towards that busy street and in the foreground heading towards me, equally spaced apart and divided by the threshold between the pavement and the road and the double the yellow line are two people, both with a suitcase. It looks like mother and son I would say but the son is maybe 35 to 45 and the mother is suitably older and on the right you've got a load of rubbish and on the left you've got a sort of fence and I think this just sums up traveling really I think this sums up London perfectly I think that the sometimes the the, the quieter side streets are actually the better ones to get images from because you can pick out individual people or in this case a couple of people and they really stand out strongly whereas sometimes when you're on the main thoroughfares of London you've got a lot of people wandering about milling about and you can't actually pick out a certain individuals like you'd like to but here this is I like this one because the, like you say the two people are evenly spaced out but it actually looks like they're going in opposite directions it looks like they're fanning away from you like they're going to pass you on either side also again in, there's interest in the background so if that I would say if that was completely empty at the back there it wouldn't be anywhere near as good a picture but you've got the couple who are wandering off holding hands you've got the guy standing on the corner and like you say you've got this rubbish on the uh, on the right hand side that, that sort of you know it, it almost tells you where you are so look at the next image this is from same camera different town different time just me taking a picture through a window of a laundrette and everyone in there looks miserable. Well, oh, they're in a laundrette, so I can't, can't imagine having too much fun. Again, this is a it's a, it's a good image. I, you can, I might have used a polarizer, possibly. I mean, I know it's difficult to, to put a polarizer on for a specific image when you're doing street photography, but I might have used a polarizer just to kill those um, reflections in the glass. Although, saying that, they do add a little bit on the left-hand side, so it does give you some, your eyes something to look at. I like the fact that the, the guy centrally is looking directly at you. That, that brings a bit of interest out in the image. No, you're right with the polarizer. You can actually see me in it, which is, which is quite interesting. On mm. again, another wet rain day. And this is the same, same place, not in the laundrette, but the same city, not London. Mother and daughter, both fairly old by the looks of it, trying to just get out of the rain. Now, this is not a perfect image by any means. It's a bit blurry, it's not that sharp, but it sort of doesn't matter because I've got the image. That's almost one of the things that doesn't really matter when you're doing street photography. It's not all about the sharpness, it's not all about getting it exactly right, it's about getting a feeling. And, on, and here, you, this, I mean, to me, this is your typical sort of uh, market town scene where it's just a wet, horrible day. They're probably off to a market or somewhere or just coming back from the supermarket with a bag in, you know, bag in hand, trying to get out of the rain. Uh, yeah, and I like, the, I like the, um, the sign on the left-hand side as well. That sort of gives it something to, you know, to anchor the, the image. Yes, yeah, it's, this was my first attempt at street photography. And I've got an episode called Street Photography First Attempt. And, and this was one of the images I took from there. And, I suppose I was learning my craft a bit on this one. And a lot of the images I took that day weren't sharp and that was just user error. And that's what I like about street photography. It is difficult. 
and you do need to practice it. You don't get all the time in the world. You have to make snap judgments. You have to be a bit blase and really just go for it. Nine times out of 10, no one will bat an eyelid. One time out of 10, someone will bat an eyelid, but it just says, don't take a good dribble. But you've already sort of left by that point. So yeah, th this was sort of my first foray into it and I, I like it. I, I, I wish it was sharp, but there we are. I'm gonna say thank you to Gary because Gary's looked at my images. We don't really have time to look at Gary's images in this episode because we, we've talked, uh, quite nice to talk about things and we've certainly gone into a lot of detail. But in the next episode, I'm gonna see Gary's images and we're gonna have a little talk about Gary's street photography images. Don't forget, I'm on Twitter and for the life of me, I, I can never remember the Twitter handle, but it'll be in the show notes. And do have a look at my Patreon page if you want to swap podcast. And do have a look at everything else in the show notes. And don't forget to check out Gary's YouTube channel. Thank you. Goodbye.